Welcome everybody, Dan the Wolfman here, CatchJitsu.com. Recently, I did an old school versus new school jujitsu rant. I'm surprised at the positive feedback from that. Dear jujitsu school owners and instructors, I'm going to teach you 10 easy steps how to teach an old school street jujitsu class at least once a week. I think you owe that to the history and the roots and everyone that fought back in the day, whether it was in Valley Tudo, NHB, MMA, on the streets of Rio, on the beaches of Rio, uh, or whatever, you owe that to them and you owe it to your students for them to feel confident and be able to go out at night to be able to defend themselves, okay? Students need to know these basic, basics, basics, guys. This is fun. This would be a fun class to have. You, and if you say like, yeah, I teach a great martial art for self-defense and they don't know how to do a proper up kick and up kicks to the face and proper get up to base making space. If they don't know how to deal with strikes on the ground, it's not really jujitsu. So if you just want to call your class new school jujitsu school, awesome. Sport jujitsu school, awesome. But if you're saying Brazilian jujitsu, if you're saying a martial art, you should at least do this once a week. So, um... Sunday, I rolled with a bunch of black belts. I talked to a couple of that, a, a much older one. I've been training jiu-jitsu, training martial arts since 86, like almost 34 years in jiu-jitsu, almost 23 years since January 1997. He had been doing jiu-jitsu in Rio since um, 1987, and his students had started in 2007, so 10 years later than me. His student said he was a first-degree black belt. Um, so I talked to both of them about it, and it seems like it's a general consensus. Let's embrace the technical advancements of the new school. But boy, you better have that old school to, to not just in grappling fall back on, but you're going to need it against the real thing. Guys, I have bounced off and on 23 years. I have faced multiple attackers, felony attacks, weapons, uh, been overseas, been in different countries, been in the real world. Please take some of what I have with it. To listen to some of it, okay? Um, I have um, fought in the early days of no-holds-barred fighting before MMA was even a coined term, just as it was transitioning in MMA. Uh, I fought as a white belt exactly eight months after training in jiu-jitsu and a few months of wrestling. Um and up to just under five years fighting one of the best fighters, most experienced fighters in the world. So I, I fought six fights, won three by first round submission, and lost three to the, some of the mo the three of the top ten. If you look at my most experienced fighters when I fought them, or now that have just like some like three hundred fights combined or something ridiculous. So um, I fought in two Daido Juko World Championship fights, which is kind of like street karate jiu-jitsu with headbutts and throws and elbows and throws going to the ground for 30 seconds to simulate um, real streetness. And uh, a lot of no-gi advanced submission tournament stuff as well back in the day. So um, anyway, guys, here it is. I think it's really important to your students. Everyone gets into martial arts because they want to feel confident. The, the environment, the camaraderie, the exercise, the funness of rolling, that's all really important. But let's once a night, let's offer it to the students that want it and or even make it a requirement. Should people be getting ranks in jiu-jitsu if they don't know the basics of jiu-jitsu? At least once a night. It could be fun. It could be like a Friday night. Uh, let's all get together and then go out for beers later, right? It could be that. So anyway, here are the 10 steps, easy steps to follow to make a program of an old school street jujitsu night. Um, so here we go, guys. And I have four black belts, multiple systems, trained everything. So just so you know my background. And if I can, I'll edit in footage. I'm very busy tomorrow, so I won't have time. So I don't know if I'll release this or if I'll spend the hours and hope it doesn't crash, is what's happened sometimes, to um, edit in footage of some of this particular techniques I'm talking about, examples. All right, step number one. Take down or throw directly into either a submission or a knee ride, double knee ride type position to dominate position. And then the students practice. So it could be hip throw or shoulder throw with Ponsonagi straight into the Juji Gatami armbar. It could be um, spinning a guy around into a rear naked choke using his body armor as I've done hiding right here or here. I've done that when 10 people were trying to hit me and then stop me on the ground when I was down. Coming to someone's rescue that was sucker punched. MMA author Clyde Gentry. Um, 
so it could be anything along those lines. It could be more advanced stuff, uh, County Bassani leg locks and all kinds of stuff. If you want to see if you're more advanced, look at my Enter the Takedowns, Enter the System Takedowns, one hour compilation. The first six are pretty basic. My Uchimata kind of look bad, but you know, I'm trying not to kill my training partners, guys. Um, and, um, but I get into all kinds of more advanced stuff, okay? Single leg and a leg lock right away, uh, double leg and a Von Flute show, County Basami leg takedowns, baseball slide, heel hooks, all kinds of stuff, okay? Number two, step number two, defense to grab self-defense. So it could be wrist grab, shirt grab, throat grab, headlock, bear hug, etc. and so forth. Any kind of grab, show that old school Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, try to make it a little more alive, okay? Try to make it a little more alive at the end, instructor, when you're showing it the last three times after you've broken down step by step, which yes, newer students are going to need. And then the students practice this, practice that. Step number three, should have done that. Three, that would have been cooler. Step number three, instructor demos a minute or two of a live random, live, alive, random grab defense going against one of his higher students. So for one to two minutes, break a sweat, work hard. The guy's just constantly grabbing you, coming from the side, coming from behind, coming in a headlock, coming in a bear hug, coming in a rear naked, coming in a guillotine, whatever. Grabbing a wrist, grabbing a cross wrist, grabbing a shirt and, and acting like he's going to punch you, all that stuff. Instructors, here's the time for you to show and improve yourself and show what students should aspire to. And the students break up and do a live. And some of the beginners are going to be lost, but each week you're teaching a different technique, right? So eventually they start compiling different techniques and they're getting sensitivity and strong spine and breathing and awareness. And all the stuff I talk about in my um, best self-defense compilation that's 20 minutes. I shoot tons of live random grab defense re with a real aliveness, guys. I have another video teaching Gracie, um, Hicks and Gracie-like jujitsu where I teach the concepts of the spine, structure, breathing, um, sensitivity, and I try to articulate those thoughts. Um, so then students break up and do the alive stuff. Step four, instructor shows a takedown against either someone coming forward, you can just walk forward with some pressure, the wild slaps that are going to, you know, wild swings, um, gorilla movements that are going to happen for most street attackers. Taking them down. That could be diving in, or Grace Jiu Jitsu, Hoist Grace UFC 1, outside leg trip, um, you know, anything like that. Um, you know, different ways of getting the clinch. If you want to add a knee to the groin there and an elbow to a duck under, to an arm triangle, standing arm triangle, to an osoto, you could, do, you know, whatever. Get creative, instructor. I certainly teach a lot of that kind of stuff on my YouTube page. It's all very, very important. Um, it could be against a jab, or you can simulate it with your students throwing a palm, make sure their fingers are up and not going in the eyes, make sure everyone's fingernails are trimmed, etc. It could be the single leg sliding way up in a high side mount, looking to hammer fist and attack arm triangles or whatever right away. It could be single leg takedown on a cross ankle lock, Sakuraba style against the jab, against a cross cross, palm strike cross. It could be the double leg takedown. Everyone wraps the head nowadays. UFC's out there for a long time. Crappy guillotine attempt. You pick them up carefully, you dam or not so carefully, damp them, dump them in a side mount and do a Von Flucho. Okay, so now we got some aliveness and the students are going with some aliveness, not to totally hard, but walking forward with some pressure, someone swinging, someone going and getting your timing down for your takedowns against a striking opponent. Uber important. All right, now, step five. Let's ramp it up a little bit, but to be safe, let's make a line and everybody watch and cheer and go on. As I did this on my first or second night in jujitsu back in 97. Um, the instructor or one of his top students will put on big boxing, big boxing gloves and moderating his level of punching power and aggressiveness, but at least with a little bit of forward walking, um, swing and try to take the head off, you know, 50, 60, 70, like 75% is good of the students so he can get the timing and learn how to clinch properly and get that whatever kind of takedown. So he can do a single or a double or whatever, but he can time against the striking opponent. And then they have to take him down and go right away in a submission 
or right away get a dominant position. So, so slide through past that guard, mount right away, go to neon belly, whatever, get mount, take the back, control a dominant position, stabilize it, get used to stabilizing and sticking off the takedown. Very important, not just learning static takedowns. Static judo takedown training gets most people rolled through. That ain't good. You gotta learn how to stick and stabilize off your takedown. Um, and stabilize that position for 10 seconds. It's a lot of fun. The instructor will be pushing off a mount, whatever. 10 seconds, yay, and then boom, the next guy, next, go. Great workout for everybody. All right, step number six. The instructor shows a technique that incorporates striking or striking defense, and then the students practices. This could be any kind of like um, Gracie Academy, punch block series stuff, putting your knees in the chest in the range, grabbing double wrist control, faking the up kick to the face, hopping over the triangle choke when they're stunned, like a, um, I think it was Jacare A versus, uh, oh, I can't think of him right now, uh, Gegard Musasi, something like that, right? Um, it could be something like that. It could be, for variation, it could be how to use strikes to set up your submission. It could be how to use the hook to get the guy covered for mount to get that top wrist lock. Old school, but it works. I did it in my third NHB fight. Um, he then bridged me off pushing the armpit because I didn't hop off the side mount. Luckily, I belly down and got the armbar in midair. Um, let's see. It could be, you know, it could be setting up from S mount. So low mount grapevine, low mount. So you slide up into the high, super high mount. Go to S mount, set up some strikes and take the arm bar where you stay on top, not going to your back. The stay on top, stretching up to the sky arm bar that I teach. Um, you know, anything like that, uh, any kind of, it could be, it could be, it could be, uh, leg hook guard is my favorite. It could be some rubber guard. It could be how to set up leg hook guard that over hook trap the head. Good practicing good head control. People have forgotten this. What about keeping posture break so you don't get beat up in guard? What about close guard? Everyone's open guard, sitting guard now. Gotta, that's not where you land it from a takedown, guys. It's not open guard. It's people trying to punch you, your head off, and people trying to stomp you when you're down. All right, so step number seven. Instructor demos and then students practice open guard, outside leg circles, knee kicks, and up kicks. Toes back, heel up, okay? So students can practice that just in the air, Boom, 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 get, get some sweat going, all that. Leads into step eight. The instructor then demos proper making space, get up to base, AKA later known as the technical standup. But in my head, when people were trying to stop me when I was down, I was kicking knees, open guard, keeping a circle around, protecting my head, kicking knees, saw a stool behind me like a Jackie Chan movie and did a long, the proper way, no one teaches anymore to make space, get up to base, up and underneath it, and ran my ass off and hid like a Jackie Chan movie from the 10 metal militia garage fighters, literally, that were stomping me when I was down for coming to the author's rescue, uh, my editor-in-chief, when I used to write for Ultimate Athlete Magazine. Um, so that's important, and um, they should get up to base, or it could be any number of the other get-ups. You can. I have a popular video, eight get-ups video. So from guard, from side mount, whatever, Heisman Trophy, there's a whole lot of get-ups, guys. Um, how to get up and escape back to your feet, anything like that, and students practice that. Step nine, open guard circle movement, one up, one down, one up, one down, Ali Inoki drill. The Ali Inoki drill. Are jiu-jitsu schools doing this anymore? No? First 10 years of my training, they did. In the last 10 years, they haven't. One guy's running around you and you're you going both ways, open guard, and you're faking knee kicks, oblique kicks to the knees, and safely practicing simulating up kicks. And you can do that. And you can also do it with like big pads, good, like the karate, taekwondo type, big, big shields. You can do that. You obviously make sure the student keeps the knee bent if you're doing that. But you can practice on the pads, running around, getting their mobility down, doing 30 seconds, and then at the end of the 30 seconds, the instructor says, get up to base. 
Student does proper kick and scoot J hooking, get up to base. Not the spinal lift where you'd get cracked with an overhand or a, a baseball bat swing at your hand. You gotta kick off that front leg and J hook and square up your base. So if you do get hit as you're coming up and landing in a square base, you're not standing up and getting cocked in crappy base. So very important stuff that's being forgotten. Switch, the instructor yells, and the other guy does 30 seconds. Do that twice each, man, and, and boy, it hits a good workout. Step number nine, open guard, circle, leg movement. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, eight, nine, get up to base. We just handled that, okay. Eight, nine, and then 10. We finish up, I think I handled that, get up to base, technical stand up, switch, up kicks in the air or on bags, um, showing the technical get ups. Um, and then 10, step 10 guys, roll with light slaps to the head and medium punches to the body and legs. It's important to learn how to overhook, keep posture break and all that kind of stuff. It's important to know how to perform jujitsu with strikes. And if you have controlled students and more advanced students and you have the space to do it safely, Occasionally, you can let some people start on their feet and slap box a little bit, but not just to slap and box, but to slap and learn how to get the clench and do a knee to the body and a takedown MMA light, if you will, but for self-defense purposes, with the purpose not to sit there and just strike each other, the purpose to get the takedown and dominant position. BJJ, not jujitsu. BJJ was about positional dominance. Takedown, pass guard, side mount, knee on belly, mount, rear mount. It was all about getting the mount or rear mount because when you can really elbow someone in the friggin' face, that's what matters. It wasn't about point and stall. It was about positional points to simulate the importance of getting to a dominant position and not letting yourself get mounted or back mounted because you pay if that happens. So guys, those are very 10 easy steps. I think it would be fun. I think people would enjoy it. You should at least offer one night a class a week doing stuff like this. And really to get any kind of rank in jujitsu, shouldn't you know how to do these basics? I see black belts teaching to get up to base wrong when they're not making space. Okay. I landed a uh, heel hook, heel kick to the face on the kidneys of Pancras champion Yuki Kano and brought one up to his face. Then he stands up and he tried to round kick my, as I was getting up to base, I had to drop back down as the round kick whizzed over my face. Had I not like bailed on my post arm, had I kept coming up, I would have gotten my head kicked off to the crowd in Kuroki and Hall. Um, but I was making space and that's what's important. I see people teaching it without making space. Guys, hashtag keep jujitsu real, old school jujitsu instructors, you know, you can keep doing what you're doing and the trends that you're doing, but let's keep it a martial art. Let's keep it real. And really all you got to do, in my opinion, is add one old school street jiu-jitsu night a week. And trust me, everyone's going to love it. I'm Dan the Wolfman. Please let me know your thoughts. Please thumbs up. Please share. Please subscribe. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Please check out my playlist. I've been doing Enter the System playlists. Since 2014, making hour-long compilations, actually systemizing grappling from positions everyone back then used to neglect. <coughs> My front headlock system. Not like anyone ever started with snap downs to then all the guillotine variations to then going to Schultz control position where you can switch off to Anaconda or, you know, Darces or Peruvians or catch your arm through guillotines. I taught all that in 2014, case of Gatami, uh, top turtle side mount, um, top half guard submissions, leg locks, any position, guys, you name it, I've done it. Look at those playlists. You'll find a lot of stuff that, um, you know, has only been started, some other people teaching it. But uh, you'll find a lot of stuff that people don't know, and it can give you the edge. And uh, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers.